fire has really taken hold and the brigade are talking about evacuating a local estate. The fumes from the warehouse could trip right over it if the wind veers. Over. Yeah, I'll spoil their Sunday lunch. Will you want any more of our team, sir? Over. I think we've got enough for now, June, but stand by. 988 from Sierra Oscar. Receiving. Over. Yeah, go ahead. Jubilee Wolf, Eddie. No better location. There's a foreign gentleman standing very excited about something. Yeah, receive, Polly. You all right, mate? Are you the driver? Are you all right? You're hurt. Are you hurt? Listen, oh, listen. Wasn't my was anyone else involved? Wasn't my fault. Just, just sit. Oh, oh, no. Sierra oh, Oscar from 988, oh, urgent message. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, listen, oh. ambulance required, Jubilee Wharf. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, listen, just stay here. We'll get an ambulance for your ASAP, okay? Come, come, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Nice. Look, like, come, come, sure, sure. Look, you're like, man, man. Man. So, Wagga Lori, fuck with the Saitara, with Darabha Toyota, with Anik Zahla, with the Alab. Listen, mate, I can't understand the word you're saying, so save your breath. Listen, just calm down, just calm down, calm, okay? Whoa. Just. Yeah, 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 all right. Sierra Oscar from 988. Go ahead. Yeah, Polly, we're going to need a fire brigade and assistance too. RTA. Skip lorry's gone into his side, driver possibly concussed. Also got a driver trapped inside a car. It's balanced on the edge of the river. Looks like the lorry went into it. Uh, door's jammed and I'm afraid of tipping the driver in with the car if I try and get him out. Over. Stand by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 988 from Sierra Oscar. The fire brigade could take a while because of this warehouse just fire, over. Stop. Now, will you just please stay put? I'm waiting for the ambulance, yeah? I just want to help. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, just help. Help. Sit down, yeah? Oh, well, you can't now, just sit. Come on. Uh, uh, oh. Did you get that, Eddie? Oh. Over. Come on, I'll be here. Not so hard. Yeah, go ahead. Is there any way you can secure the car until help arrives? Over. Yeah, I'll do my best, Sarge. Oi! Over there, and you look after him, okay? My lash, my lash. Here, 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 here. Come here. You're gonna come here, and you're gonna look after him. You understand? Comprendo? Huh? huh? Capiche? Come on. Come. I'm gonna say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Just. Nine eight eight from Sierra Oscar. Receiving. Over. Yeah, go ahead. Ambulance is on way. Over. Received. And I reckon we're gonna need some lifting gear as well, Polly. What's the problem, Eddie? Well, it's a bit difficult to say, Sarge. The uh, car slipped further toward the river and it could go in at any moment by the looks of it. ETA for the fire brigade's about 10 minutes, Eddie, so just do what oh. you can. Receive, Sarge. Out. No, no, no! Keep still! Keep still! Keep completely still! Right. Can you hear me? There's been an accident. You're in a very dangerous position. You mustn't make any sudden movements. You hear me? What's happening? You've been in an accident. Just just stay calm and save your energy. Help's coming. I ain't got an aspirin, have you? <laughs> no, I've got one split in a take. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, ambulance is going to be here sooner. Is it bad? I need off. Yeah, well, uh, I'll try and keep the jokes down, yeah? Cheers, mate. 
I'm Eddie Santini, by the way. Pleased to meet you, Eddie. Steve Andre. Likewise. I'd shake hands. Um, I don't think my arms are broke. I can't, I can't move them anyway. Does it hurt anywhere else? Yeah, all, all over. Breathing's uh, painful too. It's on Cape right? Yeah. Uh, how, how bad is it? That's the river I'm staring at, isn't it? Yeah. You're, uh, you're balanced on the end of a mooring pile. Uh, for now, anyway. Oh, well, that works. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Actually, not, eh? Keep still. Oh, God, I'm going to die. Oh, no, I'm going to No, you're not. We're going to get you out. Just as soon as the fire brigade gets here. So where are they? They're coming. They're coming. Oh. Eddie, I need you to do something for me. If I can, yeah, sure. Listen, if I don't make it out of this, I need you to tell my wife and kids that I love them, OK? And that I was thinking of them. We're going to get you out. I know, but if you don't, you've got to tell them, OK? Of course. Where they live? Oh, 73. <sighs> Rusbury Drive. My wife's Jill. Yeah. Joey's seven. And, and Katie, she's nearly ten. Right. You married, Eddie? No. Sierra Oscar from 988. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, Polly, any, uh, any news on the fire brigade or ambulances? I'll see what I can find out. I'd appreciate that. Not long now. Eddie. Fire brigade. You need a hand? Sam, yeah, you bet ya. Yeah. See? Another officer's here. Oh, so you got a crane. Don't go away. I'll be back in a sec. Some situation, eh? Tell me about it. The pile's starting to go, you know, it's breaking up. So what's happened then? Oh, your guess is as good as mine. Look, just see if you can get hold of some rope, yeah? We must be able to secure it to one of these bollards somehow. You reckon, yeah? Well, you got any better ideas? Well, not as such, no. Well then, get a move on. I'll get this one here. No, no, not the mooring rope. Down there. Right. All right. He's bad luck. And the house is bad luck. Good. Keep it up. How you doing, Steve? Well, I'm still here. Sam's gonna find something to secure your motor till the fire brigade gets here. Ah, ah, you hear that? Oh, the cavalry. <laughs> yeah, I told you'd be okay. If one mighty bound Jack was free, eh? Huh? Never mind. That's right. Funny, isn't it, eh? What? That sitting around and doing nothing all day makes you so thirsty and knackered. I don't suppose you've got anything to drink on you, have you? But as soon as we get you out, I'll buy you a pint, yeah? I never touch alcohol. Lemonade, then? <laughs> yeah, lovely. Sorry, I didn't see them. Come on. Adam was without one in my hand. There's one the casualty police. here, the other one's over there. Where? He's over the edge, he's trapped in his car. There's another officer with him. Jack, you take this one. Right. Ambulance is here. Ambulance? No cavalry then. But they'll be able to give you something for the pain, yeah? Every cloud's got a silver line, anyway. Something like that. Can I get down to him? Wait, just a minute, mate. It's not strong enough for two. I'll come up. See, one day you'll be able to look back on all this and just laugh. I won't be far. Okay, listen. His name's Steve Andre, and you've got to be very careful because the car's not stable, right? At okay. all. Right. Good luck, mate. Hey, Steve, who are you doing, mate? Yeah, I found this. Ah, yeah, great. Well, uh, 
Yeah, well, I'm thinking on, um... And there's no monopoly on ideas here, Sam. You can have one too, if you like. Yeah, well, I thought you'd work something else when I fetched the no, rope. No, no, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, right, right, okay. We're gonna feed one end of the rope through the driver's window, yeah? Back out the passenger door, bring it back up in a loop and tie it around there and there. How are you gonna get through to the other end once the rope's passed through the car? Well, don't worry, I'll think of something. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, worry, Steve will be back. Move! No. Hey, but internal competing. It doesn't get out of Very quick, I don't reckon it's a chance. Yeah, if we don't secure the car, it'll have no chance. Yeah, ETA for the brigade, Polly. We've got a very critical situation here. Stand by, they should be with you soon, Sam. Ready. Uh, can I make get any sleep around here? Ah, uh, you're back with us, are you? I'm not gonna make it any. Of course you are, we're nearly there. What? Yes. I'm dying, mate. Just, just, just try and keep awake, Steve, yeah? Fight it. Eddie, you're not going in. No alternative. The fire brigade's gonna be here any minute. Oh, you can guarantee that, can you? It's too dangerous, man. Oh, look, Sam, just tie your end of the rope up, yeah? I'll swing around the car and throw the rope up to you. You're wasting your time, Eddie. How's that? I'm dying, mate. Oh, rubbish. Before you know it, you'll be in the ambulance, yeah? You ever made the mistakes in your life, Eddie? What? Things you really regret. You wish you could undo if you had the chance. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. My wife, Jill. She thinks I'm Mr. Wonderful. That's good, yeah. Great husband, great dad. Hey, Steve, listen, come this way. No, I can't, mate. Because you see, I'm not... I'm not great. And I'm not wonderful. I'm just a bastard. She don't even know me at all. Or the kids. Look, just, just calm down. Let's just have a woman. Oh, Steve, come Karen. on. Karen. I was on my way to meet her when this happened. Oh, okay, I understand. No, you don't understand. I need you to go and see her. Tell her what happened to her. You'll, look, you'll be able to tell her yourself, I promise. Karen Simpkin. Flat 13, Oxmoor Flats. That's going, that's going. Eddie, come on! Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right, I will. But I've got to do this first, okay? All right. Yeah? What's happening, Sam? Eddie's been a hero. Eddie. Eddie, I've got a present with a name on it. It's a birthday. Only it mustn't be found on me. Heavy, heavy trouble for Jill and the kids if it's found on me. Where is it? It's in my pocket. Which one? My left one. I can't reach in, Steve. I can't put any weight on Eddie, the car. It's a packet of coke, mate. Oh, you're joking. I'd really be for right now, eh, if I pull through. I can't do anything about it, Steve. Uh, you're old Bill, aren't you? Oh, no, 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 it's not that. It's just I can't. I can't physically. I've always hated the old Bill. <laughs> Look, uh, no promises, right, but I'll see what I can do when they get you out, yeah? I'd appreciate it. I'll see you out there. Yeah. Eddie. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I don't understand you, mate. <laughs> it's a charge, isn't it? Eddie, you can bring the whole lot down on top of you. Look, just make sure you're insecure, all right? Yeah? I'll get a blanket. He's mad. I just hope he doesn't swallow any of that water. <laughs> All right, hold on to the back of your belt. No, I'll reach out down the road. Eddie, hurry up. Nice one. Tie off. Move on. Come on, tighter. Yeah, we're trying, we're trying. Yeah, harder, come on. Yeah, come on. Okay, I think that'll do it. Can you uh, sort of stay there, yeah? Drives in the bad boy, so cook as you can, yeah? One person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie! 
Can I get a pulse? We'll get you back to Sun Hill, Eddie, unless you need your stomach pump first. Eddie, after going in the water? No, no, sir. Kept my mouth closed for once before anybody else says it. Go on, then. Should really go with the body, shouldn't I, sir? Identify it. Somebody else can do that, Eddie. Jamila? Yeah, I'll Yeah, but listen, you go back to Sun Hill and change into something dry, Eddie, before you catch pneumonia, OK? Sir. It should really be me that goes with it. Why? Mm -hmm. She had a wife and kids. Come on, Eddie, you did your best. We all saw that. Yeah. Win some, lose some, eh? Matthew. Okay, wait there. Dodgy tyres, front and rear. No doubt traffic will find a lot more before they're finished. No doubt. Question is, who's going to carry the can? Okay, now. Well, dry anyway. Oh. First, I just want to thank you both for your excellent work this afternoon in very difficult circumstances. It's just a pity it didn't have a happier outcome. Sir. Sir. But as you know, it doesn't stop there. Mr Andre's wife has to be informed and the lorry driver, Robson, has to be interviewed at St Hughes. And Sergeant Boyden's going to interview the witness, uh, Mr Habib, and follow up on the skip hire firm. I thought you might break the news to Mrs Andre, Eddie. You were able to talk to her husband before he died, I understand. Yes, sir. Uh, only... Well, if it's all the same to you, I prefer to go to St Hughes, talk to Robson. There's a few things I really want to put to him while everything's still fresh in my mind, if you know what I mean. Sam? Yeah, no problem, sir. All right. Cheers. Though, I will talk to Mrs Andre at the hospital after she's seen the body. Yeah, I had a private message for her. Well then, um, better get to it. Sir. sir. Oh, Eddie? Just go easy, OK? I know the condition of the lorry makes it look like it could be Robson's fault, but we don't want to go jumping to conclusions, all right? Sir. And what, he actually dived in? Well, James, yeah. Blimey. I'm surprised he came up again, actually. You know, it's very treacherous, that one. Yeah. yeah. Sooner him than me. I'd be surprised if he didn't get a commendation. Yeah, but that's because you're a fan. I'm not a fan. I just gave him the benefit of the doubt with Rosie Fox because I didn't know what happened between them. But I do know what I saw this afternoon, and that was someone putting himself on the line. Well, I'm sorry, officer. You should know as well as I do that the personal effects are normally given to the next of kin. Normally, yeah. Only in this instance I've been asked to collect them in connection with our inquiries and then hand them over. You had to sign for them? Of course. I uh, feel I should draw your attention to this. To the deceased pockets leaking a white powder. Thought it uh, might be drugs. Drugs? Why? No, it's talcum powder, more like, or some kind of a joke. But thanks. I'll see it gets checked out just to be sure. Well, you know, in my job I see a lot of strange things. No, I can imagine. Where do I sign? Oh. Um, so, best not to mention it to anyone until we know exactly what it is, though, yeah? I don't want to go accidentally smearing reputations, if you get my meaning. Even the deads. Oh, no, I understand. Very easy to do? Yeah, and very hard to undo. I'm a clam. PC Santini.
is uh, PC Santini that I was telling you about. This is Andre. Yeah, thanks. I'm trying so hard to save him. Yeah, well, listen, um, I'm alright to talk after you've... Seen him? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. Thank you. So how did you get on with that lorry driver then? Later, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring her along to you after. Pick up his things. Well, they've already been signed for. By one of your officers. Who? PC Santini. Sorry, doctor's with him. So you got a say for himself? Robson. Oh, the doctors have been with him. I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. Those Andre's effects? Yeah. Why well, have you got them? Well, that's the way Andre wanted it. He wanted me to look after his stuff and to give it to his wife personally. Why? Well, I don't know, but it was important to him for some reason. When did you get them? Sorry? You didn't have them when we saw you just now. No, nah, they're in my pocket. So why didn't you give them to Mrs. Andre? Well, God, I don't know. I mean, I just didn't think. Besides, it's been a stressful day, you know? Anyway, it's probably better she sees him first, isn't it? The lorry was coming around the bend far too fast. It was totally out of control. Then it crashed into the side of the Toyota. زقل العربي على ورا وبعدين انحرف على الشارع خبط في الخشب واتقلب التويوتا اتحدفت على طرف الكوبري والسواق السواق ما قدرش يعمل اي حاجه it pushed the car backwards then swerved across the street hit the wood and tipped over the car went straight over the edge the driver didn't stand a chance right you want me to tell you that he loved you and Joe and Katie and that he was thinking of you at the end I can't believe it it's all so stupid. Senseless. Here you go. <laughs> Thanks. I spoke to him only a few minutes before it must have happened. On his mobile. He was going to the office to pick something up. What did he do? He bought an export. Oh. What sort of things? Dried fruit. It was a joke among our friends. It was good money. He was a good man. The best. He worked hard for us. He loved the kids. Where are they now? Uh, friends' party. Sunday afternoon's party time. Looks like lorry driver completely lost control. Had he been drinking? Well, the breathalyzer didn't show anything. According to Truck's initial report, it could be down to the vehicle. So we're looking at what? Death by dangerous or careless driving? And aiding and abetting for whoever should have maintained the lorry. Hmm. Oh, Eddie. Well done, mate. Man in a moment. Hey. Bit of a hero then today, yeah? Well, listen, any copper worth his salt would have done the same thing in the same situation. You catch me diving in the Thames. What's your point, Tony? Nothing just that you went over and above a call of duty. Well, sir, in a good way. Yeah, I, th I think what Tony's trying to say in his usual cack-handed way is uh, good on you, mate, yeah? Oh. Yeah. Oh, cheers. Admit it, Tony. You just can't handle the fact that Eddie Santini might actually be a hero. He's guilty as charged, Your Honour. Well, they'll have to do more than get a bit wet to make up for what he did to Rosie. I think you're being a bit hard on him, to be honest, Pop. He let you break the news to his wife, though, didn't he? Yeah, well, why shouldn't I? And he was great with her in the hospital. What about you, George? What do you think? Oh, I don't know, Pop. I can't work the bloke out at all. Mm. Come on, oh, 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 yeah. oh. Dead. From internal injuries before we could get him out.
God. Poor Steve. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. How did you know about me? Well, Steve, uh, Mr. Andre asked me to tell you, unofficially, as a sort of favour. We, uh... Well, I was able to get to know him a bit while he was trapped, you know, talk to him. I see. He wanted me to pass something on to you. A message to say he loved you. A message? Yeah. Right. Thanks. Do you, um... Do you mind if I ask you how you got to know him? It was at some drinks promo. I thought he was into dried fruit. It was a do given by this Californian vineyard last year. Steve was looking to get his sultanas or whatever direct from the grower. So what, you're, you're in the wine trade? I was just the totty I had to pass around the booze. Steve offered me a job in his office. PA, you know. Ah. Yes, I know he was married. But sometimes you just can't help these things, you know? He was a lovely guy. Well, I'm uh, sorry to have had such bad news. Especially on your birthday. Did he tell you that? Yeah. Did he... <laughs> he didn't have anything else for me, did he? Apart from the message. Well, like what? No. A what? It sounds so mercenary. He said he had a surprise for me, that's all. I don't suppose he meant this. No. Right. I better be going then. Well, thank you for coming, Mr... Sorry, what was your name again? Santini. PC Eddie Santini. I appreciate it. No problem. I told you, I don't know what he was doing down there. He shouldn't even have been working yesterday on a Sunday. A lot of illegal fly tipping goes on around there. Yeah, well, I would know nothing about that. No? No. What about cutting corners when maintenance, setting out dodgy vehicles? Yeah, well, that would be stupid, wouldn't it? You said it. Look, I'm the manager. I'm just doing me job, OK? So if one of our drivers has a tragic accident while working on his own initiative, well, I'm sorry, but there it is. Well, we'll be talking to him soon down at St Hughes. We'll find out exactly what he was doing now and who say so. In the meantime, I'd like to look at the lorry's maintenance record. Fine. And I'll be getting traffic division down here to inspect your other vehicles on a regular basis. Yeah, well, you can tell that to Mr Liner. He'll be back at five. My pleasure. And while I'm not sure about the wisdom of going into the river, I just wanted to say how much I admired. Well, we all admired your actions yesterday. Well, thank you, sir. If the public heard more about the way that officers day-to-day -day face difficult and sometimes life-threatening situations, as you did yesterday, and a little less about the few bad apples that give us all such a bad name, well, we might be held in rather higher esteem. Hmm? Sir. Well, that's all. I just wanted to let you know that your actions hadn't gone unnoticed. Thank you, sir. Well, I hope today's shift is a little less eventful. Well, he's back on normal duties today. Really? Who's interviewing the lorry driver? Sergeant Boyden's getting Sam Harker to do it, sir. Yesterday really cheered me up, sir. I thought I was OK, but... Oh, I see. Well, thanks for being so honest, Eddie. Some officers seem to think that a stiff upper lip is de rigueur, even if it does affect their performance. If you uh, want to have a chat any time, my door's always open. Thank you, sir. It'd be a shame if we don't make the most of this. In what way, sir? Well, PR-wise. Sun Hill needs it and the Met needs it. And with respect, sir, is that such a good idea, given the press interest in Eddie's recent history, the uh, sexual harassment claim? Andrew, whatever happened between Eddie and Rosie Fox, A, the press didn't run with the story, and B, yesterday he showed all the qualities for which Met officers are admired. Or at least used to be. Selflessness, bravery and compassion. Don't you agree? Oh, indeed, sir. There can't be any reason for me not to phone the press office, then, can there? Mr. Santini. Miss hey, Simkin. Can I give you a lift anywhere? Oh, well, that's very kind of you, but I'm on patrol, thanks. I thought we could have a chat. Oh, what about? I think you know what about. No. There was something for me, wasn't there? From Steve. Ah, uh, sorry, I a don't know. A present. 
I went to St. Hughes. They said you took everything. I see. So? Do you know what that present was? Do you? Yeah, I do. So you're lucky I'm not taking it further, aren't you? Look, maybe we could come to some arrangement. What? Steve and I, it wasn't really serious for either of us, you know? I mean, I liked him, I really did, but it was just fun. I suppose it was a bit decadent, really. I mean, he liked treating me, I liked being treated. Yeah, to coke. Amongst other things, so what? I got rid of it. What? Well, to protect his wife and kids. Do you know how much that was worth? I no idea, not much. There wasn't a lot there. I don't believe you. Tough. You're going to sell it, aren't you? Goodbye. You're a thieving, bent bastard. Oh, you're all heart, aren't you? More worried about your Charlie than your dead boyfriend. I can make trouble for you, Santini. Yeah? Go ahead. Do you think I nicked it? Go in there and report it. Go on. Off you go. What do you remember about it? Not a lot. We have an eyewitness who says that you smashed into the side of the Toyota and shunted it over the edge of the river. Oh. According to the officer who was first on the scene yesterday, you said that it wasn't your fault. Did I? It probably wasn't then. And breathalyzer was negative. I told them, I don't drink! Right. So what happened then? The brakes went, didn't they? Yeah? I don't believe I've killed someone. Is it true we had two little kiddies? Yeah. God forgive me. We're responsible for maintaining the trucks. I don't mean doing it, but, we, you know, just making sure what's needed gets done. Only. What? I knew the brakes weren't right. They got really spongy, you know. But we were that behind. You can't believe how much demand there is. I mean, they're putting up houses everywhere and, and the boss wanted us to catch up. Mr. Liner. Sunday's a good day to work because it's the road to clear. Didn't it cross your mind your vehicle might be dangerous? I was going to get it done today. It's booked in. You can check. Oh, yeah, I will. Excuse me, are you PC Santini? No, Harker. Oh, well, can you take a message? Someone wants to see him. <laughs> I can't trust you, can I? I am a policeman. And a colleague of PC Santini. Yes. John, put it down. It's been a development. The package that PC Santini took yesterday to test for drugs. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, apparently, a woman came in this morning asking if anything had been found on Mr. Andre's body addressed to Karen. Which was the name on the gift label, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, yes. My, my colleague dealt with her, but we can still give you a description if you like. Yes, thank you. So, was it drugs then? Uh, well, at this stage, we uh, really don't know. a word. Hmm? You might prefer somewhere a bit more private. What's it about? Karen's present? So, what do you know? Mortuary assistants at St. Hugh's said you were testing a package found on Steve Andre's body for drugs. <laughs> I am a clam. What? It's not what you think, Sam. And what's that? Steve Andre told me he was having an affair with a woman called Karen Simkin and that he had a present for her, a packet of coke, actually on him. Now he asked me if he didn't pull through to get rid of it if I could for his wife and kids sake. And you did? Mm. <sighs> Down the Boggus and Hughes. I don't believe I'm hearing this. Look, you saw yourself how cut up she was, what he meant to her. How do you think she'd feel to hear that he wasn't just going over the side but he was into drugs as well? How much was there? Not a lot. Meaning? Meaning not a lot. Well, what? A gram? Two grams? A kilo? Oh, don't be stupid. Yeah, well, it makes a difference, Eddie. I mean, did you ever think where he might have got it from? 
What he was doing down there by the river on a quiet Sunday afternoon. Yeah, it did cross my mind. His import-export business, dried fruit, eh? Yeah, well, look, I didn't know about that till later, after I got rid of the stuff. For God's sake, Eddie, it's a Class A drug. He was probably a dealer. And she might be as well, for all you know. Look, the bloke's dead. And whatever he might have done, he's paid for it. So what good is going to come out of his wife and kids learning that he wasn't such a saint after all? Oh, right, so ignorance is bliss, eh? Sometimes, yeah. Eddie, Mr Brownlow wants you. Oh, do you know about Sarge? Well, I don't know. He doesn't confide in me. How'd you get on with Robson? Oh, looks like he was overworked and his lorry's brakes were well dodgy. Yeah, I was booked in for a service today. We'll get it written up as soon as possible. I want to interview the owner of the firm. Mr Brownlow, Eddie? Yeah, right away, Sarge. Look, there's no harm done, Sam, believe me. Hmm? Now, who else knows about this? Just the mortuary assistants, I think. Uh, assistants? Well, the bloke we saw at St. Hugh's said that this Karen woman came in looking for a package, but his mate dealt with her. Right. Well, look, best keep it that way, huh? It's no big deal unless someone gets hold of the wrong end of the stick. Well, what happens if this Karen bird starts creating? Well, what could she do, huh? Complain her coke's gone missing. Eddie. You did pour the stuff away, right? Well, what are you saying, Sam? I'm bent. No. Well then, take my word for it. I did a good deed, okay? Right. I better go and see the boss, yeah? Yeah. Must be 55 at least. <laughs> so, George. Yes, Seth. Have you got a minute? Yeah, what's up? Not here, eh? An interview. Just with somebody from the job. Although area, hopefully it'll get into the standard and maybe a couple of the nationals. It's entirely up to you. Well, I'm not sure, sir. Because? Well, it was a team effort, sir. Well, your modesty does you credit, Eddie. But everybody that I've spoken to agrees that what the public want to hear about is the individual officer putting himself on the line for the man in the street. I would be very grateful, Eddie. Personally. If it was either a you two or Dave Quinn or practically anybody else, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah, you'd be doing the wife a favour. Yeah, that's right. But Eddie... I don't know. There's something about him that just doesn't feel right. Do you know what I mean? He plays both ends off against the middle. Changes his story when it suits him. Well, just keeps you in the dark. Yeah, well, I don't think we should be jumping to conclusions here. After all, he was a hero yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah. But we've only got his word for it that he poured the stuff away. Could he used it himself? Or sold it? Come on, Tom. What? Well, I've had my run-ins with Eddie, but I've never had him down as being Ben. You've never been sure that he's totally legit either, though, have you? So what do we know about this Karen Simpkin bird? Well, only that she was knocking off Andre and she went to St. Hugh's looking for a gear. Eddie didn't seem too bothered about her though. Reckon she'd never complain. Well, either Eddie feels really cool about it. But... Hold up. She went to St. Hugh's looking for a gear? Yeah. Well, how does she know Andre was dead in the first place? All right, yeah, I told her. So what? When? After the shift last night. What? You went to see her? Yeah, I said so. In Mufti? Yeah, so? You just don't get it, do you? Hmm? Well, enlighten me then. This complete stranger asks a copper he hardly knows to get rid of his coat for him, just to spare the feelings of his missus. That's what happened. Then this copper doesn't tell his mates about it until it comes out through a third party. Even then, he still fails to mention that he's seen the woman who was supposed to be getting the drugs. Now, can you blame his mates for being just a little bit suspicious? Yeah, well, it's not how it looks. Oh, so you admit it looks well dodgy then, yeah? Look, I got rid of those drugs. Sorry, Luke. Bit busy in here at the moment, mate. Go on. Yeah, all right. I got rid of them for the best possible motive. Now, why can't you just trust me, huh? Because you don't trust us, do you? Not with the truth. I mean, you're never straight. There's always some sort of anger where you're trying to play. What about this Karen Simkin bird? What about her? Well, she's lost her boyfriend. Lost her coke. I'd be pretty hacked off if I was in her shoes. Especially if there was a bit more than just for my own personal use. Oh, what are you saying exactly? I don't know, Eddie. You tell me. Perhaps we should go around and see her. Well, why? Just to see if her version of events checks out with yours. Ah, oh, what is this? Some kind of kangaroo court. Besides, who knows what she's going to say? Meaning? Well, she might decide to drop me in it, mightn't she? Now, why would she do that? I don't know, I mean, perhaps she hates the police. 
Either we go and see her or Mr Munro. Take your pick. I don't think anybody wants him to get involved, do they? So just give us the address, OK? Eddie! Just the man I was looking for. Someone from the job is coming to interview you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. You can use the conference room. <laughs> oh! And the press office is still hopeful about the Nationals. Oh, great. Thank you, sir. You've got work to do, I take it, you too? Just so long, sir. Mr. Celebrity, eh? So what exactly has he done? I don't know. Something about destroying drugs evidence? Well, it doesn't surprise me. I always thought he was suspect. Eddie's not dense. No, I won't put anything past him. Not after the way he stitched up Rosie. You're just jealous, that's all, because of what he did yesterday. And how'd you work that out? Luke heard him saying he destroyed the evidence. I can't win, can I? I'm a hero and still everyone hates me. Hey, what's going on here? Knitting circle? No, Sarge. Come on, back to work. You seen Sam anywhere? No. So the condition of the lorry was Robson's responsibility? Well, yeah, and, uh... Sorry, sorry about that, sir. Look, I don't feel any happier about checking up on Eddie than you do. But what's the alternative? Telling Munro would just kick off a CIB investigation, wouldn't it? And no-one's going to thank us for that if Eddie turns out to be innocent. Uh, he's not exactly going to thank us either, is he? If we do find out he's innocent. Look, all I know is he's been troubled since he first started at Sunhill. Now, all I want to do is I just want to know once and for all what he's about. Can we trust him? I mean, where will we be if he is bent? How do you know that one day you won't be chasing some scumbag dealer down the street and suddenly he turns and pulls a knife on you? Now, you'll look around expecting backup to be there, Eddie. Only he'd have melted into the brickwork. Yeah, OK, OK, we'll talk to this bird, but I think Eddie's right, you know. It's not going to solve anything. Mr Liner? Well, Sergeant Boyden, isn't he? Terrible business. Dead man. He had a wife and family, I believe. Yeah. Terrible. Uh, well, I imagine they must be pretty devastated. Pretty much. Uh, sobering, is it? Sorry? Well, the idea that... You know, your life is just bowling along as normal when suddenly tragic accident changes everything, totally. Except we're not sure it was entirely an accident. The vehicle owned by your company was examined by the traffic police. Defects were found. It appears it wasn't properly maintained. Really? Really. I see. You've interviewed the driver, I believe? Yes. Did he tell you that he, like all our drivers, was responsible for the maintenance of his own vehicle? I don't think so. As the owner, you're responsible. Well, I think you'll find I'm not, actually. Mr Robson signed an agreement acknowledging his personal duty to maintain his vehicle. Again, like all our drivers. He has a certificate to show we've trained him, so he knows he has to do a daily inspection before he takes his vehicle out. Well, he says he was so pushed to keep the vehicle on the road, he didn't have a chance to have it serviced. Pushed? He says he told you the brakes needed looking at. First I've heard of it. But you did ask him to work on Sunday. <laughs> so basically he's blaming me. I'm just saying what he told us. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? It's human nature not to accept responsibility for your mistakes, isn't it? Do you deny it's company policy to keep the vehicle on the road as long as possible? No, because that's good business practice. But I am denying that I'd ever put business ahead of safety, because that's bad business practice. Our inquiries suggest otherwise. Do they? Yes. Well then, Sergeant Boyden, sounds like I'd better get on to my lawyers, doesn't it? Before I say anything else. No. Sorry, you must have the wrong person. Sorry. Karen, we know you went to the hospital. We got a description. Am I in any trouble at all? We just want to talk to you, Karen, that's all. Who told you Steve was dead? Is this official police business? No. I didn't think so. Well, you can kindly get your foot out of my door then before I call the real police. Thank you. And you can tell whoever sent you that he's not the only one with friends, all right? I really am very sorry someone's died, Sergeant. But, sadly, these things happen. Yeah. The dead man, he wasn't sure, I hope. Well, if he wasn't your broker to be hearing from his lawyers. No doubt. Fortunately, I am well insured. Not against a conviction. Or? For allowing your vehicle to be driven with defective brakes and tyres. As I said, Sergeant, I think you'll find it's not my responsibility. Goodbye. Fancy a lift? Well, not especially. We want a word.
so. She didn't want to talk to us. Oh, are you surprised? Not going to drop herself in it, is she? Well, she's obviously hiding something. And I have too, is that what you're saying? Oh, fine, fine, go to Munro then. I'm a thief, I'm a drug dealer, coke whatever you want. Either you believe me or you don't. I can't give a toss one way or the other. Now, I know what I did and why, and I do it all again, only this time I take a Polaroid because I never actually thought I would have to prove I was a good Samaritan. Now, can I get out, please? Well, you both know Eddie's not the most popular man on the station. Well, yes, right. sir, but if looks could kill. What's your point, Andrew? I'm just worried that publishing an interview with Eddie might backfire, sir, that's all. Andrew, yesterday a Sunhill officer did something exceptional. I want him and Sun Hill to get some credit for it, all right? Yes, sir. So what do you reckon, then? Well, let's just think it through. Oh, no, no, look, not again. I mean, I mean, the fact is, whatever he's done, we've got no hard evidence. Well, we know that he claimed Andre's effects and didn't pass on the drugs. We know he didn't pass on Karen's present. I mean, there's no evidence to suggest there were ever any drugs involved in the whole thing. We've only got his word for it. I can't really see Karen giving us a statement if we go to Monroe, can you? But, you say, the whole thing stinks, though, don't you reckon? Yeah. I mean, he could have nicked the drugs and tried to send them back to her. Use them for blackmail, sexual fights. Yeah, and he could have murdered Lord Luke. But if we haven't got any evidence, we're snooking, don't we, eh? Ah! All units, police require urgent assistance, Duke Street. Eddie's in trouble. Sierra Oscar from 416, on way. Sierra Oscar from Sierra 1, on way. ETA, two minutes. Received, Sierra 1. Come on, son, step on it. What's this all about? You shouldn't stick your nose into other people's business. Look, if Karen Simkin sent you, you're making a big mistake, yeah? Street next to the gasworks. Oi! Sierra Oscar from 416, ambulance to alleyway leading off Duke Street. Eddie's hurt. Two suspects heading towards Victoria Way. Eddie, Eddie, can you hear me? Josh, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Getting too old for this, mate. <sighs> Eddie, you got any idea who did this? Isn't he the one who went into the river yesterday for that RCA victim? That's right, you were there. Aye, what a lay, eh? Anyone see the attackers? Only indistinctly, uh, they were both wearing masks. George? Oh, I could give you a good description of a pair of DMs, Sarge. <laughs> Looks like they were waiting for him. Any idea why? Look, Mr Munro's gonna want all the facts. Isn't there anything you can tell me? No, Sarge. Sorry, Sarge. Or perhaps Eddie can throw some light on things. When he can talk. It's gotta be something to do with that coke, hasn't it? Who knows? You might have put the wind up that Karen, even. Yeah, maybe. Well, whatever he's done, I've got a good spanking for it. Yeah, well, let's hope he deserved it then, eh? At least it solves our problem about going to see Munro. This time, yeah. Doesn't look like he's going to get his face in the papers either, does he? 